Hello and welcome to Join News Prime live on your DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 125. This is Join News Prime with me, Samuel Kojobris. In our lead stories, this are uh, Alfred Tuyabua rubbishes. And this is demand for the Attorney General to be sacked or resigned following a release of a recording alleging the AG was involved in witness tampering. Attorney General is very resolute, very firm, very healthy undertaking his duties as an attorney general. He's currently out of jurisdiction and very soon he'll be back. Now, President directs Employment Minister to engage with organized labor over the opposition to decision by SNET to sell off some hotels to our great minister, Brian Champons, Rock City Hotel. Go to the president that we needed to engage in, in this. He has referred it to the minister to start the engagement with us. We are hoping that these engagements will help all of us to find a solution to what we think is a problem. Our Deputy Attorney General Alfred Tia Yeboa has rubbished the NDC's demand for the Attorney General to be sacked or resign following the release of an audio tape by the opposition alleged, opposition alleged to be a secret recording between the Attorney General and the third accused in the ambulance procurement trial, Richard Jagba. Speaking on the sidelines of the launch of Amnesty International's Human Rights and Death Penalty Report 2023, Mr. Chayabwa said that his boss, the Attorney General, remains resolute while maintaining that the content in that audio recording is yet to be authenticated by the Attorney General's office. It is not confirmed whether what we have is an authentic audio. It's not confirmed. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that the Attorney General is very resolute, very firm, very healthy, undertaking his duties as an Attorney General. He's currently out of jurisdiction, and very soon he'll be back continue his duties as an Attorney General of the Republic. Oh, we are in court. And case of this nature are fought in court. We have closed our case in that matter. The first accused person has cl closed his case. The, second the third accused person is in the witness stand and are going through examination. So that's where our focus is. The NDC wants him to resign or recuse himself. What do, you, what do you say to that? There is no basis, my brother. But do you think the audio will affect The audios have, if there are any, have nothing to do with what we are doing in court. Mm -hmm. And the judge yesterday made it known to all of us that what we are doing in court is different from what we are doing in the public space, that's politicking. Mm -hmm. Our focus is to do what we are supposed to do in court for it to get to the end of this matter. You, you've indicated that you are yet to authenticate that audio recording, but really, did your boss ever have any conversation via telephone with the third accused? It is not in doubt. We issued a statement, and within the week, you've heard our spokesperson, very true, Sakun Sanda led to that kind of conversation, and then we think nothing on toward was said, as, as I speak now. That may, that may be the view of other people, but not my view. Oh, we should all stay committed to the cause of the Republic. We must make sure that we protect the public purse. It matters not who is involved. If there's anything untoward, we must make sure that we support the prosecutors to come to conclusion on matters before the court. Because we represent the Republic. We represent you. Over 34 million Ghanaians. It's not our own representation. So we only need your, your support and nothing else. Now, joining us via Zoom for more on this developing story is a private legal practitioner, Nana J. Bafo Ewa. Nana, I'm grateful to you for joining us. How do these allegations of witness tampering by the AG affect the substantive matter being, being, being uh, uh, heard in court? Um, mm. If it were to be established that indeed um, there has been any such tampering, mm right the degree of it will be determined by the court and it would have ramifications however the fact of it ought to be to be established you know in matters of this nature we need to distinguish between matters that are solely resolvable based on facts 
and those that are resolvable based on fact and law okay. and that of those that will be resolved purely on law mm -hmm. first and foremost we ought to have the, the fact ought to be established whether really and truly uh, the allegations are true and until that is established we don't go to the second level mm. which is the ramifications okay. right mm. and so um, for me i think that um, what is happening um, perhaps because there is a key political figure involved mm. uh, the politician might not uh, you know, or we are not in a position to mm. control the politician. Okay, but but, but ah. na, 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 one thing you cannot run away from is the fact that the AG called an accused person in a case is prosecuting. The law does not allow it that you speak directly to to a, an accused person. Isn't that something that uh, you know the the court can base on to probably draw a conclusion of a sort on what's happening? What kind of conclusion is the court going to draw? The court will have to draw the draw a conclusion based on the kind of conversation that went on, mm. the kind of conversation that went on, the material evidence of which is um, is the purported recording. Mm -hmm. That purported recording, first and foremost, the authenticity of what it contains ought to be established. Nobody has established that. Mm. The place to establish that is the courtroom. Right. Rather than establish that, they have all moved from the courtroom to the court of public opinion, mm -hmm. where they are not even subjecting themselves to public scrutiny. The first time we heard the tape being played was at the press conference. Mm -hmm. At the press conference, was there even an examination? Was the presenter or the speaker questioned by the press? Nothing of the sort happened. Mm -hmm. They don't also disclose whether or not that tape has been examined by a forensic expert and who that forensic expert is they don't even disclose it now we all know that even in the courtroom when an expert with all the qualifications in the world come to say that i've examined these this this material and i confirm that this is what it is the court does not take it hook, hook line and sinker it is subjected to the test of cross-examination. And it is only when it has been subjected to cross-examination that the court can give it weight by through uh, uh, the evaluation of it, mm. right? Mm. That hasn't mm. happened. Okay. That hasn't mm. happened. But, 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 so, but, but na, 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 what do you make of the attempt by the third accused to have that money for which this whole matter was based on paid by his company? and was actually refused by, by the Attorney General. I am not in a position to comment on the propriety or otherwise of the Attorney General's decision not to accept the money. Okay. He is the Attorney General. He has before him material evidence, right, um, that based on which he, he makes those decisions. Mm. Let us not forget the essence of criminal prosecution it's not solely for restitution, right? It is also to it is also to punish, so that there's no repetition of such offence in our society. Don't we complain of corruption? We complain of corruption. Don't we complain of causing financial loss to the state? We complain of causing financial loss to the state, right? Mm. If if we only say, or if we do say, that once you are being tried for causing financial loss to the state. All that you have to do is to return the money and then the trial will stop. Then, my brother, people will steal state funds. People okay. will cause financial loss to the state mm. and then mm. go and use the money. And mm. as and when a trial process commences, they will just refund the money. Okay. So we need to look at the utility of criminal prosecution or criminal sanction. Okay. It is not solely for compensation, for which reason restitution will be sufficient. Okay, but in the next uh, 20 seconds, if you can do this for me, do you support calls for an investigation into this matter, whether be it parliamentary probe or an investigation by the General Legal Council? Any form of investigation that would establish the truth or otherwise, mm in the allegation, I think it is welcome.
right? Okay. I think that whatever allegation is being made should be subjected to proper scrutiny. Okay. And if the forum is such that it would ensure mm. that there will be scrutiny, I support it. Okay. Rather than rush to the court of public opinion. Look, look, before no, no. I go, very respectfully, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how did this come about? It came about because Jakpa, during cross-examination by Eduji Tamakro, who is the lawyer for um, um, Dr. Forsen, right, you know, made certain statements. That cross-examination is not proper cross-examination because Jakpa mm. and Dr. Forsen's interests are aligned. Okay. And so in the cross-examination by Jakpa, by Dr. Forsen's lawyer of Jakpa, Will be deemed uh, will be deemed to be examination in chief. Okay. The All only right. cross examination mm. that can test the veracity of that claim mm. is the cross examination of the attorney general. Okay. All that right. hasn't been done. Okay. Uh, and thank, so you, th th thank you, Nana. I'm, I'm grateful to you. Through. I'm grateful to you for joining us, Nana. Uh, but for uh, a, 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 is. Uh, uh, a, a private legal practitioner away from that president of as director and minister for employment ignatius bafwe were to engage organized labor over the opposition to the decision to sell some hotels including the labadi beach hotel to minister for our brian champons rock city hotel this is according to secretary general of the trades union congress dr yauba whose outfit is preparing for a crucial meeting with the senate board on thursday information if you want is that we are going to meet with the Senate board tomorrow. Organized labor leaders are going to meet with Senate board tomorrow in the morning. In the afternoon, we are going to meet with the Minister for Employment, who is also in charge of pensions. We wrote to the President that we needed to engage him on this. He has referred it to the Minister to start the engagement with us. We are hoping that these engagements will help all of us to find a solution to what we think is a problem. Uh, so these engagements will give us the solution. I In my opinion, I'm happy. Because we understand the processes are still underway to give out these uh, hotels to Brian Champo. What I'm saying worry. is that we have, it's not a worry. We have to engage. The, the law has given the power to the board to decide what we use the state funds for. Now, when we express our concern, the board wrote to us to say, yes, we have seen your letter and we want to engage. So tomorrow morning, we are engaging the board. Tomorrow afternoon, we are engaging the minister who is in charge of pensions. And I'm saying that I'm very confident that together we'll find a solution to what we think is a problem. So what's your major expectation from that meeting? My major expectation is that we'll find a solution to what we think is a problem. Now, Dr. Yaba wants workers to rest assured that organized labor leaders will not compromise their position on this, insisting they will do all they can to ensure SNET remains sustainable and does not deviate from its core responsibilities of paying pensions to contributors. They should, they should not worry. The leaders are engaging all the important stakeholders in this. First, we want to make sure SNET is sustainable. So that everybody who is contributing to SNET, say at the age of 20, in the next 40 years that they will retire, SNET will be able to pay their pensions. Every worker should have the confidence that we are engaging those who are in charge of SNET. And we will make sure SNET is sustainable and there will be no time that you retire and SNET cannot pay your pension. The NDC MP for North Town, Samuel Okujoto, has been uh, on a crusade against the deal. As I have noticed, he will lead a section of the public who are opposed to a transaction to demonstrate on Thursday. I want us to scale up the public agitation, ratchet up the pressure, and get all of these public officials who are clearly not acting in our interests. They should listen to the outrage, the public anger, and stop what they are doing, but they are refusing to. So in compliance with the Public Order Act at 491, I have notified the police that on the 18th of June, 2024, at 9 a.m., we shall be leading a public manifestation, a demonstration against this sale. 
we intend to begin I've given them the route we intend to start in front of the Labadi Beach Hotel proceed through La Palm Royal Beach Hotel through the ministries and then end at the Jubilee House where we intend to present a petition to His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Now, the ongoing trial of Daniel Asiedu, alias Sexy Dondon, the man standing trial for allegedly killing former MP for Ibuakwa North, J.B. Dankwa, has been adjourned due to the absence of striking jurors. Now, the accused and his lawyers were in court today to continue with the trial, but were told the trial couldn't move forward. In his last appearance, Daniel Asiedu alleged in open court that he was coerced by police investigators to leave his fingerprint on J.B. Dankwa's body and at strategic point at a crime scene. There is more in the following report. Daniel Esiedu, alias Sexy Dondon, at the previous court appearance, alleged in open court that he was forced by investigators to touch objects and surfaces, including the body of the late MP, to set him up as the prime suspect in the murder. He also stated that the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufo Tampare, who was then the Greater Accra Regional Commander, was at the crime scene, prompting his lawyer to question if the IGP would be able to establish what happened on that fateful day if he were in court. Daniel Isiedu is standing trial for allegedly murdering the former Bwakwa North MP at his Shiashi residence in 2016. Today in open court, the accused was expected to be cross-examined by the prosecution, only to be told that the ongoing strike by jurors made it impossible for the trial to move forward. The case has been adjourned to June 10, 2024. Now, Amnesty International Ghana has called on President Ekufado to put words to action after previously pledging his support for the abolishment of death penalty in its entirety as the number of prisoners on death row in the country reached 184. Now, the Human Rights Institution has called for the death penalty to be replaced with a life sentence. Kenneth Jesse has more in the following report. Last year, Ghana abolished the death penalty for ordinary crimes. But crimes such as high treason are still punishable by death. Although no one has been executed by the state since 1993, Amnesty International believes the law should be abolished in its entirety. Amnesty International Ghana emphasizes that the death penalty is a cruel, inhumane and degrading form of punishment that has no place in modern society. The president has indeed expressed support to abolish the death penalty in its entirety. So we would like to find out what steps are being taken to reintroduce the bill to parliament and how the coalition against the death penalty can support to ensure it is abolished in its entirety. The death penalty is a violation of the fundamental human right to life. And the president's refusal to sign threatens to undermine Ghana's progress in upholding human rights standards. There is also the need to commute the sentences of those who are currently on death row to life sentences. And we would like to know if there are steps already underway to this issue as well. Commuting death sentences to prison terms will improve Ghana's international reputation and standing in the global community. Amnesty International also gave updates on Ghana's performance on LGBTQ and other human rights. We also have, of course, women and girls' rights. Currently, you know, Parliament of Ghana did well to vote in favor of the bill for witchcraft accusations. That is a good step for Ghana. However, the president did not sign this bill into law. And then we also have um, LGBT people's rights. Um, this is a bill that was passed in Parliament, and it is a draconian um, bill that criminalizes persons for, I guess, loving who they choose to love so far as it's consensual and they are of age. So this law is very regressive for Ghana. If the president signs it um, into law, it will give, in fact, it will degrade Ghana's human rights um, level within Africa. 
Meanwhile, the Deputy Attorney General, Alfred Tuayaboa, who received Amnesty International's 2023 death penalty report on behalf of the government of Ghana, assured of government's willingness to study the recommendations and take the appropriate steps thereafter. We have taken notice of the report, the positives, the negatives, and the recommendations. We assure you that all the things that we need to do as a government to ensure that the recommendations that are carried out will be done. The next one has to do with a small issue that my sister is about the president refuser to sign. It is not a refuser simpliciter, but there is a legitimate constitutional issue that he has raised. I know Parliament may want to address it as soon as possible. Heal, uh, wounds are healed when they are properly treated. Mindful of this, we are going to treat the wound properly. Presently, 184 prisoners are on death roll in Ghana. The death penalty, though outlawed by some countries, Several of them still execute people. This is still the journey. Prime. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have more stories for you. So please, don't go away. Welcome back from the break. This is the Johnny Smart. Let's do election headquarters now. And uh, election headquarters is always brought to you by Petrosol, your clean fall in full quantity, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountant, SIMA, the AICPA, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountant, the German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental, Wellness and Beauty, also Chop Box Technologies um, and uh, Youth Bridge Foundation, Election Headquarters for Uninformed Electorate. Now, the uh, scores of frustrated first-time voters are urging the Electoral Commission to extend the voter ID registration deadline. Despite the additional two days added to the original 21-day period, there were long queues at the registration centers as many first-time voters rushed to get their names captured in the voters' row. There's more in the following report. Long winding queues characterize the final day of the voter registration process at many centers as first time voters rushed to get their names captured in the voters register. In the Ayawasu West Wogon constituency, officials reported registering over 5,000 voters over the entire registration period. Over here in Legon has been largely successful. The turnout has been good. And then we've been able to register almost everybody that has come to us. So today being the last day, we hope that we'll register everybody and leave. We know that we can do that day. For the projection, I can't give it to you online. But for now, we've done about 5,000. Yeah, yes. But most of them, since the first day, the turnout has been great. So mostly when they come and the place is full, they don't want to sit in the queue, they would go. Just nearby at the La Enquantanan Medina Constituency Registration Center, there were altercations involving some men who brought in senior high school students for registration. Despite these challenges, the EC official stated that the exercise had been largely successful. Promising every person in the queue before the official time of closing will be registered even if it goes beyond past 6 p.m. It's been a fruitful exercise. It's been very um, quiet and calm. A few altercations here and there, but it's not something that's disturbed the flow of work here at the centre. We are within our expected figure. We were hoping to do a little over 4,000, and we have a little after 12 midday, but I, I can I can say that we'll be able to attend to them before 6 p.m. when the centre will be closed finally. Many potential first-time voters at the University of Ghana Centre said they had to forgo lectures to register. Similarly, senior high school students reported skipping classes to enrol on the voters' register. I knew that 
you know, I had to come and register today because today was actually the deadline. But I would, you know, edge or I would, you know, edge that the EC at least extend the deadline again because there are more people um, out there that, are, that have been registered, especially looking at the diaspora. There are even more people there that do not even know that there is an ongoing process at Legon Hall. So I think that good sensitization would do so that these people can actually come and register. So I was aware of the 21 days, but then I've had a busy schedule being in between classes and such. So today is the day that I'm free that I'll be able to come and partake in the registration for the voters ID. I go off the school. I'm a brother, so I was not that allowed to be coming out. And I didn't, have, I didn't know any place to do my voters ID. That's the main reason why. I'll wait for the next time. Meanwhile, MP for Ayawasu West Wagon, Lydia Alhassan, and Madina MP Francis Xavier Susu appealed to the EC to make special provisions for first time voters who might miss the deadline. From day one, it's been peaceful, it's been orderly. Uh, yes, we all know what happened the first, second day, but after that, we have had quite a successful process. Um, it's just that the numbers here are many. We are talking about a student population of over 40,000. Uh, most of them are first time voters. Look at the last day, look at the numbers. And it's been like this from day one. Some sort of a different arrangement is made for us. We have a population of so for me, that is my concern. Here in Medina, uh, things have been uh, relatively smooth. So we have a few challenges. But as of yesterday, we had a total of about 3,692 um, that has registered. Today, you can see the numbers. Um, the day is far gone, uh, but the numbers are still increasing. And most of them are students and first-time voters. Uh, so we are in talks with the officials of the EC that um, even if the day... Uh, and without them getting the opportunity, whether we either give them some number or we extend the number of hours, they'll be able to stay so we can get everyone here registered before the day is over. These potential voters are hopeful of exercising their constitutional right in the 2024 general elections and making a difference as they defied the hot sun, stayed in queues, all in a bid to get their identity captured on the national voters' roll. Rejoice, Semifak Pesu's report, read to you. Well, the final day of the limited voter registration exercise saw long queues stretching out of some registration centers across the Ashanti region as first-time voters braced themselves for one last chance to secure their places on the electoral roll. Various parts of the region saw long queues forming early with many determined to beat a deadline set by the Electoral Commission. Meanwhile, some political party agents are accusing each other of registering unqualified senior high school students. And I'm watching Yadom has more. The limited voter registration exercise ongoing for first-time voters comes to an end today. Here at the Ashanti Regional EC Head Office, housing about four constituencies, including Inshaeso, Menshia South, Menshia North and Bantama, a number of first-time voters stripped in to participate in the registration exercise. Participants from various schools, including Kumasi Girls Secondary School and Kumasi Secondary Technical School and Opokwari School, came in to participate in the registration exercise. Well, there have been several allegations leveled against each other by some political party agents. We apologize for that soundbite, but we'll bring you full details of that in our subsequent bulletins. Now, her parent died when she was very young. Kidney failure, some years later, prevented her from completing her senior high school education at Empire's SHS. That is a story of 25-year-old Dede Mensa, who now struggles to get much-needed dialysis treatment. She says she has been forced by, by the increased cost of the treatment to skip food and water intake so she wouldn't have to deal with a lot of waste in her system. She has joined other young people living with kidney failure to push for a reduction in the cost of dialysis treatment or having it quickly absorbed by the National Health Insurance Scheme. Maxwell Agbagba has more for our dialysis crisis series. 
Back here in Accra, I've met 16-year-old SHS student Rosemary Buidu. She says aside from the difficulty in raising money for a much-needed dialysis, it affects her academics too. Sometimes, because of the dialysis, I don't go to school on Mondays and Thursdays. I'll come for dialysis. Whenever I go to school, sometimes I'll be confused, especially when they treat mass. I don't understand where they are fruit because I missed some lessons. So when I go, it's difficult for me to, uh, to learn the one they have learned before I went. Mm. Okay. And sometimes we call and ask our friends and neighbors. Sometimes if we get the money, we will come for the life. If we do not get, then we will not go. Mm. Even sometimes, what we eat will be, is very difficult. Unless I'll be calling people. And sometimes I'll not get the money, so I have to sleep like this. Um, we are pleading with government to help us with the dialysis. We cannot, we cannot pay because of that. We are not able to go for dialysis. And that, that one too is our strength. If we don't do the dialysis, we are suffering. We are pleading them to help us, pay the money for us, so that we can die at least two times or three times a week. <laughs> Rosemary has now been receiving support for her dialysis treatment. Her mother says they need money for a kidney transplant. Here at a meeting called by the leadership of the Renal Patients Association of Ghana, I've met a lady in her 20s, Dede Mensa. She says she has resorted to skipping food and water intake so she wouldn't have to deal with a lot of waste in her system. Former General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Titus Bayou, wants dialysis treatments to be made free. We are looking at it. I think ultimately dialysis must be free. Mm. And we have to have a funding mechanism. My other submission on this is that if you look at the kidney situation we are discussing, the prevalence of chronic kidney disease, about 17% in Ghana, means that this condition is even more prevalent than HIV. Has it gotten the needed attention like HIV? So we need perhaps a separate entity, maybe a National Kidney Health Authority or a chronic, dis chronic um, diseases or non-communicable diseases authority to engage in surveillance for these conditions. During a big conversation on dialysis crisis organized by Joy News sometime last year, Presidential Advisor on Health, Dr. Antonin Siasari, listed what government is doing to bring relief to people like Priscilla, Stacy, and Dede. But a year on, we ask how far have we come with implementing some of these promises? There's a document which is being reviewed so that we have a law. It's very, very important. It has to go through cabinet for cabinet approval and then move to Parliament for parliamentary uh, approval and uh, the president will assent to it so that we can harvest the organ, we can st uh, store the organ and also donate the organ. It's not only for kids, are all on us, and some of us have taken up as our, because I'm a doctor, mm. first and foremost, that this thing should be done and done as quickly as possible. And then, as he rightly as the doctor once said also, we are building the capacity of our surgeons. Actually, kidney transplant is one of the most not so complicated things that we can do as any surgeon can do. Well, this is still the Join Us Prime. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Please to stay. Well, welcome back. Let's return to our earlier story from the Ashanti region where the final day of the limited voter registration exercise saw a long queue stretching out of registration centers across the region as first-time voters braced themselves for one last chance to secure their places on the electoral road. Various parts of the region saw long queues forming early with many determined to beat the deadline set by the Electoral Commission. Meanwhile, some political party agents are accusing each other of registering unqualified senior high school students. Nanabwachi Yadam has more. 
here at the Ashanti Regional EC Head Office, housing about four constituencies, including Inshaeso, Menshia South, Menshia North, and Bantama. A number of first time voters stripped in to participate in the registration exercise. Participants from various schools, including Kumasi Girls Secondary School and Kumasi Secondary Technical School and the Pokwari School, came in to participate in the registration exercise. Well, there have been several allegations leveled against each other by some political party agents. Yesterday, like it, it was chaos here. He wasn't here because of the students. People are challenging them, are challenging their age. And then the residential, a place that they used to register. Right now, you can see Wesley High School here. They had been in my constituency, that's my share of. All of them will be completing school very, school very soon. And then the transfer process will be starting tomorrow. And I don't know whether they can catch up with the transfer process so that they can transfer their vote to their various uh, place that they are going to vote. You see, we the MPP always do due diligence before we bring these um, students here. One, these students that are, you see today here are people within Menshia North constituency. They are within my catchment area. And before bringing them, I carefully selected students who are in the constituency and who have not registered but have attended um, adult universal adult suffrage age. That is the 18 years old. I'm surprised you always saying uh, we are registering people who are not within the constituents. It's a falsehood and disregard that information as such. Those students, I repeat, and let's put it on record, the students you see here are students within the constituents and within the catchment area. The member of parliament for the Inshaeso constituency who doubles as the deputy minister for finance is among several political actors who came to inspect the very last day of the registration exercise. Well, he did indicate his optimism in the MPP or retaining the seats. I like you, Dr. Mamuba over here. Oh, the next resident of Ghana. He's won. Can't you see, see that, atmosphere? It's changed. As of last year, I was scared, honestly. Me, you know I'm a very honest person. Last year, if he had asked me this, I would have said something different. But today, Insha Allah, God is with us. We believe in God. We are not perfect. There's hardship, yes. Globally, it has affected Ghana. Let's be honest. But now, now, MPP is the best bet for Ghanaians. It's the best option. Well, welcome to the showbiz segment. Let's uh, bring you, uh, you know, the almighty herself. Okay, not almighty <laughs> as an almighty girl, but... What can you tell me about this jersey that I'm wearing? Well... I understand they're the best hey, hey, hey. when you go... <laughs> no, don't go there, don't go there. I mean, yeah, I mean... I understand choosing... they're the best when you go to England. You're is choosing it true? a team. As choosing... now, right? No, no, you're choosing a team that is always misfiring. Honey, I didn't choose it. I'm just, you know... Well, this so is if because... If you want to know, no, if you want to know the best in England... Okay, don't say Manchester United. The best United. in Britain and the best in the world, Manchester United. That's it. Let's go on. What about Chelsea? Oh, no, no. I mean, they are, they are not a football team. Let's, let's go on. We'll talk about that later, but Francisca Gawu, known by the stage name Sistefia, is a Ghanaian singer and songwriter from Accra. Sistefia returned to Ghana from the UK in 2015 to start her music career. She gained recognition following the release of her hit single, Jeje, which features dancehall artist Shatawali and Afedi Perry. She has never looked back since. Today, we put a spotlight on the talent that vows to keep on sharing her gift to the rest of the world. Your vocals, the performance, you know the song, we, we listen to the, your, your songs, but you get on stage and it's a different ball game altogether. And they're asking, why is she not all over the place? What is she doing with her voice? What are you doing with your voice? I know that you have a new song out, but yeah. what exactly are you doing with your voice? You're <laughs> sleeping on it. No, I'm actually singing with my voice. Okay. I try my best, you know, to get my voice heard. I mean, anywhere possible. But you know, when, when it's your time, it's your time. I believe in that. And I feel like I'm the type of person that when my time comes, it's going to be really huge. And I really trust in that. I'm not really... 
listen to what people have to say when it comes to me. I mean, everybody is entitled to their opinion, which is understandable, but I know who I am and I know where I can be. So it is what it is. If it happens, it happens. But for now, all I know is I've been delivering since I came. I've been doing back to back. Yes, I might not be everywhere. Like sometimes I might be off and all that, but I have my own personal life. I have my own personal struggles that I'm going through. So a lot of people might not understand, you know. It's a crazy thing. You're a woman. If I tell you what I've been through, it will, it will be crazy. And it's not one, two, or th it's been more than four times I've been through that. So it's a lot of, it comes, I mean, it comes with depression sometimes. But I'm a very strong woman. You know, I always come back and then pull, pull the strings, make the hit songs. If there's no hit songs, I want to be delivering songs, you know. But um, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> about the two things that you've been promoting the whole time mm -hmm. i i think that you don't wake up and do just two things no. you do a lot of a, things a lot. so why why two things but those two things are the main things i normally do you know wake up and go make money pray i mean thank the lord for you know giving me another new day and you know and then the next minute the next thing i think about is to make money because I'm a grown up as woman now. I have to take yeah. care of myself. I have a lot of responsibilities that I have on my sleeve, so I have to wake up and make money. But there are other things that is part of life, but it's not really that important as the right. two. Yeah. Uh, is it uh, okay if I say congratulations to you? You were performing, and I noticed that there's a ring on, you know, <laughs> that finger. And I'm like, okay, I haven't seen that before. And you know, you were like, oh, I didn't shame me at two things. It was like, you know, no, I've seen your performances, but this one, it's it's just, am I, am I mm. just creating something or mm. uh, just a congratulation somewhere that I need to be giving to you? I beg you. <laughs> Look at it. You're spirit. blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to hey, Sister Fia. Like, like, I'm just friend. saying, I'm just saying. But Say, but how has the music industry treated you uh, since uh, the inception of yeah. the brand Sistefia? Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you've been in and out of the industry. You and you're still working. That's that's yeah. what I like. You're yeah. still working. Yes. But generally, how has the industry been like? I mean, in every industry, there is always a you know, the highs and the lows, and I experience that a lot, you know, the highs and the lows, and I get that complaint about, oh, Sister Fia is very underrated, Sister Fia is this, Sister Fia is that. I get that so many times, yeah. and I feel like, you know what, it's good that people are actually saying that. To me, I feel it's a positive thing, mm. you know, I mean, I don't want to always degrade myself and make it look like, why am I not this, why am I not that? I feel like God has a purpose for me, and so far as the people are seeing it, it will happen. Do we have any nominations in the team? No, I, I don't. We we're we're fighting, file. you know. I did. I've been fighting since, but I don't know why. I don't okay. know why. Yeah. But you know, we, we I talked to um one of two people in the in the in the in the, in the yeah. And then they explained to me a lot of things because I was complaining I was complaining about Aswording was one of the biggest songs in twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. 2021, 2022, and then I didn't get no nominations for that. So I was having an argument with that. But then, you know, when we sat down, we had the, I mean, we had the conversation and they explained to me everything. So right now, me and Chatterhouse, we're cool. I'm just going to focus on, I mean, I'm just going to focus on moving forward and doing more songs and then no always looking at the back. I feel like it will happen. It will definitely happen. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, saw uh, yeah, uh, I love that song. Say. Oh, so you remember I told you about Kim Promise's quote unquote wedding and there was a, a yeah, wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you that it wasn't a wedding. It was actually a song which oh. he titles Favorite Story featuring Star Korea and Olive the Boy. Oh. The song is out. It just got out just this evening. So you're seeing it first time airplay here on Joy News Prime. So oh, don't, don't, don't forget you about Hit FM, rep your jersey. Yeah, Tomorrow you have to wear your jersey. Mm. Uh, the one that you believe in. I'm not too sure I believe in Arsenal though. 
You have to believe in Manchester United, yeah. Uh, which Man City is my team. Actually. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Uh, Why are well, you condemning? So, uh, I mean, this is what I represent. No, no problem. You have to love Manchester United. Well, uh, thanks for being a part of us. But remember to brush your teeth before you go to bed this evening and tomorrow morning when you wake up from bed. Now, with either Pepsi and cavity, cavity fighter, Pepsi and charcoal, Pepsi and herbal, or Pepsi and triple protection. Because with Pepsi and every, every smile, look at my smile. <laughs> well, uh. okay, thank you so much. There's more on myjoyonline.com.